Welcome back to the Ascension Series. I'm Dime, and today, short, sweet, maybe a bit spicy, we're talking about are you being controlled or are you allowing yourself to be controlled or are you allowing yourself to elevate? I, I just want to give you a tool today. We've got big transition that we're moving through. We've got some of us moving through light code activation. We have massive solar flares. We've got energy shifting. Everything's a little wonky right now and we're feeling it. And we're feeling a lot of ascension symptoms along with that. And so I want to give you a tool to start putting into motion immediately to support you through how, how am I navigating this? Okay. So you guys know I'm pretty spicy. I do not love how spirituality is being taught in the world. You know that I hate the fluff. Hate's a strong word, but I'd probably say it actually makes me like, Ugh, I don't like it. I'm not here. I'm not interested in anyone spoon feeding anybody hope. And I'm not certain. I'm certainly not going to do that for you. Okay. So we are being impacted by the transition. We've got a lot of crazy wild things going on in our planet. It's going to continue to elevate over, like escalate, elevate all the things for a while. Okay. Let me get to the fucking point here. Here's the tool that I want you to start looking at. Forced thought is going to control you and, or it can elevate you. So our world's pretty fucked up, right? Mm -hmm. Our species, humanity, I'd say probably the dumbest species on this planet. I don't know, in my opinion, everything else is surviving fine and not killing each other, but here we are just being ridiculous. So there's that. We've got, I want you to look at your ancestors and your parents, your grandparents, your great-grandparents, all the things. Were they great? Were they great? Did they do great things? Did they live great lives? Or did they just get through life? I'm not knocking anything. It is a thing of the past to be good, follow the rules, don't ask questions, consider everything else crazy outside of the box of what you know, and just make it through life and have a, have a, like a good, decent life. Yeah. Yeah. Work on some savings, get a house, like all the safety there, right? That's not what we're here for. And that's not what you're here for at all. If you're feeling the ascension symptoms, and if you've been following me for a little while, then you're not here to be them. They were taught certain things. And we're not going to get into that. Ricky and I are doing a whole debunking. Um, so you guys, I don't know if you've met Ricky yet, but we did his intro podcast today, which will be on YouTube and Rumble. And then we're moving everything over to Rumble. And we're really going to dissect like all the rabbit holes, we'll say. And it sort of was like introducing him and really excited about it. But I want to give you a tool that's so simple and uncomplicated because we overcomplicate everything. So if you've been following me for a while and you're ready to like actually do the work and stop being a whiny baby about your ascension symptoms or the lack in your life, then cool, let's put this into motion. And most of humanity are still in that whiny baby phase. Well, money's hard. Well, money's greedy. Well, money's this. Love's hard. Love's work. Or they're in the stupid ass bullshit spiritual stuff of like your twin flame is supposed to challenge you and blah, blah, blah. It's like, oh my God, fuck no. You're supposed to challenge you. So the forced thought can either totally control you or elevate you. So I want you to start processing as of right now, what are the forced thoughts that you inherited, that you chose to keep? So forced thoughts are what we've been taught as a collective, meaning as a whole species, but also in our lineage. So let's just go with the lineage piece today. What did your ancestors, your grandparents, your great-grandparents, your parents, what did they do? How did their life turn out? They lived like a good, modest life. They had love. They had family. That's all you can ask for. Awesome sauce. Got a house, did all the things, had a job, had savings, RSPs. I don't know. Retirement plan. I don't know. Cool. Is that what you came here? Did you come to be basic? You didn't. I don't want to be basic. I have no interest in basic whatsoever. These forced thoughts, these things that we were taught and we're seeing it in spirituality as now that they're forcing stuff down our throats, man. You can choose to become controlled by that because the narrative is not in your favor. Or you can choose to realize I do not, I do, it's not a requirement for me to own your thought. It's not a requirement for me to own your story. It's not a requirement for me to walk your path. I can elevate, I can look at it and go, 
I'm going to do more. I'm going to be bigger than that. And so we can do that across the board in a lot of different things, but let's look at and dissect what are those stories that your lineage offered you? Was it, what was it? Was it, you know, fears of money, fears of lack of control, fear of safety, fear of, you know, like I had a McFlurry the other day and Corey was like, there was like eight half of it. And I was like, Ooh, it's so sweet, but it was amazing. Right. Okay. So here I'm putting trash in my face and I'm like, Oh, I'm so done with it. Do you want it? And he's like, Oh, you can't waste it. I was like, well, that's a forced thought. He's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, your parents were like, no, you'd have thing on your plate. Don't waste it. Would it not be more wasteful to put it into my stomach and create like complete disharmony because it's way too much sugar in my body. And then I'd be like, oh, feeling sluggish and gross and full and stuffed. And then I'd probably be burping it. Would that not be actually wasting the experience of this particular McFlurry? So it's as simple as that. What stories, what statements, how have you inherited forced thought to your negative, to be controlled, to act a certain way, to respond, to, to live a certain way. I want you to dissect that right now. And can that elevate you instead? Can it elevate you? That moment with core and the McFlurry, I was like, what do you mean? Don't waste it. It's garbage anyways. Like it's just fucking chemicals in a cup. Like what am I wasting actually? But that was like an aha of like, oh, yeah, we can't waste any food. Like it's these little things that have been controlling how we behave, been controlling how we respond to our life. And they're so hidden, but it could liberate you. It could elevate you on, well, that doesn't serve me. So money, what's the forced thought on money? What's the forced thought on sex? What's the forced thought on beauty standards? That's a whole fucked up situation, isn't it? You can't go on social media without a product being slammed in your face about either making your lips bigger or wrinkles less or like, why do we do that? It's a forced thought that that's what beauty is. I'm not inheriting that. Like, fuck that noise. I'm not doing that. Beauty is how I desire to look, how I desire to feel. What's your forced thought there? What's your forced thought on education? What's your forced thought on, do I have to own a home, get married, make babies? Do I have to do these things? What are the things that have been controlling you that you've been unaware of that you can liberate yourself and go, oh, actually, what is my desire? What do I desire to experience? I want you to look at it with spirituality. There's a whole lot of forced thought there. So we started out spiritual, religion was introduced, and then now we're moving back into this fake spiritual, right? Because there's reasons for our suppression. We're being controlled. Yep, sure are, but we're not going to get into that today. Ricky and I, however, we're doing that on Rumble. So Ricky is one of the mentors here. We are debunking everything on Rumble. So stay tuned for that. So gratifying. But anyways, back to, can you dissect what's your forced thought with spirituality? There's a lot of fake lessons out there on ego being bad. Um, death to the ego, just because some guy wrote a book and sits on a stage and you know who I'm talking about, sits on a stage with little piggy noises and is very simplistic. And one day had no money. And the next day, his first epiphany was a few thousand dollars because he was riding his bike and he bought a lottery ticket and that's how much he needed. And he wrote a whole book, a whole fuck, a whole fuck. I start calling it a fuck instead of a book Um, on, you know, how powerful it is to be here now, just because some guy had one experience and thinks he's totally figured it out. And you're taking that and you're following the ego death thing or thought, did you, did you decide that for yourself? What have you decided for yourself? Your ego is not a horrible thing. It's your human. You guys know how much of a rant I can go on that one. So we won't go there. This forced thought of divine feminine, that's a bunch of bullshit. Divine feminine, divine masculine, and the union of the feminine and masculine is a bunch of fucking horse shit. That's forced thought. That's forced thought right there. Do you actually want to be wearing frou-frou dresses or do being a dude who's like pounding on his bare chest and like, okay, I'm just so stereotype stereotyping right there, but you get my drift. That is actually a bunch of shit. What do you want the experience to be? Because you have both within you and you can actually be both and be powerful in both your feminine and masculine. And you can reframe it as the divine doer and the divine creator and have the success like we have here. You can create your whole fucking life by understanding when one of those is required. It has nothing to do with feminine nor masculine. 
Force thought. Force thought. You got to manifest. You're a line. You got to manifest. You got to be high vibes, fake positivity all over the place. Force thought. I don't always want to be hyper positive. I want to be a sour cow sometimes. So I'm going to be a sour cow. That's my desired experience. What do you desire to be? You get to choose. And there is no right or wrong in the universe, just so you know. Now, I'm not a fan of you going out and hurting people and doing like things that might be, you know, not to anybody's benefit, but you fucking do, you will. We all have the consequences of our actions. What is it that you actually desire? And can you start making decisions for yourself to elevate yourself? Can you start looking at spirituality and the, the stories of your lineage and going, hmm, does that serve me? Or does it feel like I have to try? If you're striving for something or trying for something, or if it's hard, you're fucking doing it wrong. You are God, source, universe, whatever fucking label you need to call it. You are universal flow. You are consciousness. It's in every single one of your fucking cells. You are all that is, babe. You are the master hiding in a meat suit, experiencing itself like a fucking puppet, like AI walking around being like, mm, I am everything. I am oneness. I can align with everything. I've got this tricky little operating mechanism that likes to tell stories because I haven't learned how to master that yet because I'm so impressionable that I can't make up my own mind or my own decisions or actually walk my own path. So I better look to someone else in order to be able to figure out how to do that. You just got this fucker going on. Calm the fuck out of that. Calm it down. Don't kill it. Don't murder it. Don't hate it. It is actually part of the experience and the experiment. So use it for your benefit by deciding what is it that you desire to experience? Is it hard? Stop making it hard. Just stop. doesn't have to be hard. You're forcing it. You're letting it control you. If you think that shadow work is uncomfortable and unbearable and deep and so full, oh, it's so painful, then you are in a fucking self-righteous pity party. Stop. It's not. It's not. Shadow work is understanding what has held you back and making the decision to change that thought to not be controlled by forced thought, but to actually choose your path to elevate yourself. But if you want to do that, go right ahead. Cool. You do you. Mm, I don't want to do it hard. I would never want one of my clients to go through that. Like, fuck that noise. It doesn't have to be like that. Look at everything. Meditation doesn't mean that you got to be sitting there in lotus pose. Like, no, I think most of us are far beyond this, right? Like we're far beyond what we're talking about here. We're actually beginning to create our reality. The thing is controlling your narrative force thought. Don't pick it up. Put down the story of what was given to you. It's not yours anymore. It was never yours. It was always theirs. And just because that's how five men or five women in your lineage did it, doesn't mean that's how you're going to do it. So you're going to start to identify your stories and you're going to go, does that serve me? Is that what I desire? And if it's not what you desire, what do you actually desire? And then restructure the story, stop complicating it. And if you want to complicate it and go into your pity party, go right ahead. It's just, you're going to slow yourself down. Yes, you have to heal. Yes, you've got to figure out what's holding you back. Yes, there is beauty in all of those things. If you want to call it shadow work, it's your fucking subconscious. Just why do we have to make it so like, blah, blah. go into your subconscious. Those are the hidden thought patterns. Everything that you have held onto on how you perceive the world. All you have to do is sit down for one fucking hour and look at the world around you and go, what are my actual beliefs? Do I feel safe? Do I feel seen? Do I feel heard? Do I feel valued? Do I feel in control? Do I understand that I am truly actually the creator of my experience? Or am I using all of these as a reason to stay small? Am I using anxiety to stay small, depression to stay small? You can curb those things, by the way. You can restructure them completely. I know. I know. Anxiety out the ass, like literally shitting all the time because of anxiety constant shitting, uh, among many other things, depression so deep that my life was not, I didn't want to be here. And I didn't, I, I attempted to not be here a few times. I did it all. And now I'm on the other side where it's liberated. And that's what I help people do. If I can fucking do this, you can fucking do this. If you put down the story of the four stop. So stop, stop holding on to their stories. Start asking yourself, what do you actually desire? And then start to restructure that story. And any version of yourself that's like, oh, we can't. That's what you want to heal. That's all. You just got to acknowledge it. Don't ignore it. Acknowledge it. Be like, oh, I see you. Let me teach you and teach your damn self the new version. And then demonstrate the new version. And one step at a time. Don't force it. Don't rush it. Just trust it. And it will happen. It's 
actually that's simple guys, but we're going to start with this big tool. What's the fourth step? What's the story you've been holding on to? And are you willing to let it go? Starts with willing. Once you're willing, it'll happen. All right. End rant. End scene. Over. Love you. Wow. Oh, hit my mic. This is how I'm functioning today. I'm off to teach another group. I love you all tremendously. Please look in the mirror and understand that you are so fucking needed on this planet and valued. You are me and I am you. We are one together. So go look in the mirror and go find a million reasons to say thank you. I love you. And if you can't, just find one. All right. I love you.